Hello and welcome to this video demonstrating natural selection in progress, or more accurately, a lack of natural selection. Evolution relies on the random mutation of traits that either benefit or hinder a species as a whole. This means some traits are going to be helpful and others will not. When it comes to environmental pressures, like predators and food, even minor beneficial changes can have long-lasting benefits. If the lion avoids eating one species, but instead goes after another, that first species will experience a growth in its population, and possibly even access to more food. If that change in behaviour is caused by a darker colour fur, or spiny barbs, then it is a low cost but high effect mutation. The process by which this random chance mutation that benefits one species occurs and produces a result is called natural selection, and it has been described previously. What we want to focus on today is one specific example that is both interesting for what it is but also the possible relevance to medicine in the future. Cane toads, giant neotropical or marine toad, is a large amphibian, ugly as sin. It originated in southern and central America. It is the largest of the toad species bar one. It breeds prolifically and has a very adaptable diet. This up to 24 cm toad is capable of producing a highly toxic poison called bufotoxin, both as an adult and tadpole. It is three of these attributes which make it incredibly interesting from an evolutionary perspective, but also an incredibly dangerous hazard for the environment. As an opportunistic feeder, it will consume anything it can find. This means it will survive in otherwise harsh conditions. The large clutch size of the spawn leads to a fast and often uncontrolled population explosion. These populations persist due to the toxic secretions of the cane toad. Something that was poorly understood and considered in Australia. The cane toad was brought into Australia to solve another problem. The cane beetle, which is a native species to the great southern continent. Unfortunately, it is also named for its favourite food, sugar cane. The larvae will eat the roots of the sugar cane plant, leading to its death or stagnation. In order to control this beetle population, the cane toad is brought in. The thought was that it would feed on the beetles and keep a major cash crop, sugarcane, intact for farmers. It was thought a relatively low effort biological control measure like the cane toad would be highly effective and cheap. It has been neither. 102 toads were collected from Hawaii and released in 1935. After this initial experiment, the government decided to ban future introductions of this species until it was thoroughly studied. This was completed in 1936, leading to the release of 62,000 more toads by 1937. This led to them becoming an established species, growing in number and expanding the area they could be found in. In 2010, a cane toad was found on the far western coast of Western Australia. This is a significant indication of their survivability and success. The question is why the cane toad was so successful in Australia but not other parts of the world like Hawaii. It is largely a matter of the same earlier mentioned evolutionary pressures. As the cane toad produces quickly, 
and can consume almost anything it finds, the species has not yet found itself in an adverse environment. Rather than just feast on the cane beetle, it has been able to eat both insects and even small mammals, marsupials, lizards, snakes, and birds. It is a very diverse diet, and it is unlikely that any one food group would be entirely eradicated. It is possible that they could see significant reductions, and this is true of certain species which exhibit a 90% drop in their population within a year or two of encountering cane toads. Now, there are a lot of these ugly creatures eating everything in sight and breeding like rabbits, another invasive species to Australia. The problems then extend to trying to control the cane toad, and this is where Australia is different to other places. There are few to no natural predators for the cane toad at present. In other parts of the world, snakes, reptiles, fish, birds, and even some ants all eat the tadpoles and toads. This keeps the population in check. They can do this as they have developed an immunity or found ways to consume the toad without being poisoned. Not all hope is lost though. As with most things in Australia, the cane toads are finding out the hard way that the Australian version of Mother Nature is both ingenious and insidious, while she finds a way to harm or kill everything eventually, and this resilient toad is no exception. Several of the wildlife species are developing a resistance to the toad's toxic secretions and predating on them more and more frequently. Some Australian crows and the tawny frogmouth bird have learned strategies that let them feed on the cane toad. Some of them will flip the toad onto its back, thereby preventing the secretions from poisoning them. Others have only eaten the hearts and livers. It is this toxic secretion that raises other possibilities for the toad in medicine. These toad secretions could possibly be the source for the next generation of antibiotics, peptides, steroids, and more. The protein and chemical rich cocktails that have yet to be explored in depth. Think of the psychedelic effects that some South American frogs and toads are said to have. In other cases, the frogs contain extremely toxic compounds that could be modified and targeted for the treatment of cancer. There are two current promising products that are available. In China, this is called Chansu, and in Japan it is called Senso. Just one study found many different products that could be investigated for further use. These applications include, but do not exclusively cover the following possibilities. Immune cell regulation, inflammation regulators, caspases, tumor regulators, vascular growth factors, riboses, and more. All of this does not explain every aspect of the cane toad's success and failure, but it does begin to examine a current and really interesting example of evolution that we can trace from a local insertion all the way to thousands of kilometers distant, with distinct and different genes at play both on the front of the cane toad wave and way back to the heartlands of cane toad country. It does highlight how ecological diversity is important and that even seemingly minor changes have a big impact when examined as part of the big picture. Small differences, long-term changes and gains that even today we can look at exploiting for the use of medicine and research. Thank you for watching this video. 
If you have found it interesting, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.